Hello, this is your video for seminar six that will be about field methods and crop implementation systems. So in this video we're going to talk more about the specifics of how we could create a food forest or how we could create a large edible garden and we'll talk about particular methods such as plant guilds, intercropping, and companion planting. These are some of the terms that we will discuss throughout our seminar and will be used throughout the second half of our course. The first is a plant guild. A plant guild is similar to any other type of guild in that it is a formation of plants that work together and benefit from one another in a certain space. So for instance, a plant that provides shade to other plants that do not want as much direct sunlight might be able to form a guild or plants that are nitrogen fixing can be placed with other plants that need a lot of nitrogen. So plant guilds are something that are very important within the permaculture design part of our course. The second thing is companion planting. Companion planting is similar to making your plant guilds because it's planting various species near other species that benefit from one another. So an example of this is planting tomatoes near basil. And third is an orchard. So orchards are large intentional plantings of crops or shrubs that are maintained for food production. And we will talk a lot about orchards throughout our course and studying fruit and nut orchards will be a big part of this course. So the field methods that we are going to discuss range from plant guilds to layering vertical and aeroponic growing to biointensive and successional growing to companion planting as well as interplanting to orchard building and to zone planting. To delve more into what a plant guild is, we will look at some of the benefits that a plant guild can provide. So a plant guild, like I said, is a formation of plants that benefit from growing and inhabiting a certain space. Benefits that can be included are nutrient transfers, like nitrogen fixing trees, giving to other perennial or annual plants. Secondly, sh layering, so shading, vertical space, and organic matter content. So lots of leaf litter can provide organic matter content that's needed to grow our typical annual vegetables. And lastly, beneficial insect attraction or pest repellent. So many times you will see um, bee guilds that have lots of trees and vegetation that bees will pollinate and they, they attract our bee pollinators um, as well as plant guilds that are surrounded by different pest repellent plants such as chives, onions, garlic, and oftentimes rosemary as well. So this is one of our field methods. Our second field method is vertical gardening. And vertical gardening has taken many shapes throughout the past 10 years. It's become a very pr pronounced thing. And vertical gardening can mean growing alongside a fence, it can mean growing hanging plants, it can mean growing along a living wall. There are very many different types of vertical gardening. And vertical gardening is something that we will practice within our field lab. And the image here is an example of vertical gardening because it is plants that are growing up through a pallet that was filled with soil. So it is taking up the vertical space rather than taking up the horizontal space that you have for growing your crops. As part of our vertical growing or aeroponic type of growing, we will discuss arbor trellising. So arbor trellising is just one example of a way to use 
some sort of structure that's already in place or something that is aesthetically pleasing and grow edible crops on it. So for example, you can grow many different things on an arbor trellis, such as hardy kiwis or wine grapes or even your cucurbits, your squashes and your cucumber plants can trellis up these arbors. Companion planting and intercropping are a very important part of our crop implementation systems. So companion planting is pairing two types of crops that will benefit from one another or that grow well in similar soils, thus allowing a more efficient and more productive system because you can grow things closer and with more integration. Similarly to plant guilds, companion planting and intercropping can help to increase the nutrients in the soil for another plant. They can help with shading as well as helping with insects and repelling insects environments. So companion planting and intercropping is something that has a multifunctional purpose within our permaculture system. It is also very important to intercrop in order to increase the biodiversity of your plot or your raised bed. By creating this greater diversity, the plants are gaining more of an advantage against pests as well as disease. So they are less susceptible to these things because they have a more integrated and diverse system. The last field method that we will talk about in this preview video is orchard building. Building an orchard is a crucial part of creating a permaculture system. It is very important because it is one of those large aspects that creates multi-year phased growing. There are a few different layout types for your orchard that I've listed here. Your orchard layout type may differ depending on what type of region that you are growing in, as well as your pests and your varmints that may be trying to get into your orchard. These will be things to think about during your design process. The second part of crop planning is understanding your zones, your temperate zones, and your hardiness zones. So here I have examples of things that would fit into a zone 5A, which is what we are here in Lake County. You will want to plan for this, which type of fruits and nuts will grow best in your temperate climate. Moreover, there are many different field methods that we will discuss throughout our seminar and throughout our course. This is just a preview of some of them that could be helpful. Thank you.